If I secretly placed a blue ball inside a wooden box, and then later I showed you the closed wooden box and said, there's a blue ball inside this box, you could only believe or disbelieve me. You couldn't know for sure. Until I actually opened the box so that you could see for yourself, you wouldn't and couldn't know with certainty whether a blue ball, something else, or nothing at all was inside the box. This kind of hearsay is second-hand knowledge, which is simply a belief in someone else's claims, and is very different from first-hand knowledge. First-hand knowledge comes from direct personal experience. Once I opened the box, revealing the blue ball inside for you to see with your own eyes, then it would become first-hand knowledge, and no longer a belief. Now what if I secretly took a picture of the blue ball sitting inside the open wooden box, and then later I showed you the closed wooden box along with the photograph? In this instance, would you know that there is a blue ball inside the box? No. Once again, until I actually opened the box so that you could see for yourself, you wouldn't and couldn't know with certainty whether that picture was of a different box, if the ball was removed or replaced after the picture was taken, or if the picture was completely doctored and faked. Just like hearsay is belief in someone else's words, photos are belief in someone else's pictures. Both are second-hand sources of information, and neither can be known, only believed. So when NASA and the world's space agencies present us with pictures of a blue ball in outer space, or their astronauts tell us that Earth is a blue ball in outer space, do we know that to be true? Or is it simply a belief? Without first-hand experience of seeing Earth from that vantage point, we cannot claim to know that Earth is a blue ball in outer space. We may choose to believe or disbelieve the words and pictures of the astronauts, but neither can be known without direct personal experience. Only a small handful of astronauts in history have claimed to have seen Earth from that vantage point, and the fact of the matter is that they could just as easily be lying as telling the truth. Likewise, the pictures supposedly taken by these astronauts could just as easily be fake as real. If we want to know something, we cannot rely on the pictures and testimonies of other people. Pictures and testimonies can only be believed, not known. So how can we endeavor to know, and not just believe, the true shape of the Earth? People and pictures can lie, but tangible substances and empirical demonstrations cannot. In your experience, the horizon is always horizontal, and sea level is always level. Still water remains flat across its surface and physically cannot show curvature or convexity upon its surface. The horizon rises to the eye level of the observer and remains flat 360 degrees around regardless of altitude. Your every experience and every personal observation is always that of being upright on a level earth. You have never experienced being upside down or on the sides of a gigantic globe. Even if you believe earth is a globe, in your experience, you know it to be flat. Likewise, you have never observed or experienced the supposed motion of the earth. Except for maybe an earthquake or an avalanche, your every experience and personal observation is that of a completely motionless Earth. In your experience, the sun, moon, and stars are all moving overhead, but the Earth underfoot is still. Even if you believe Earth is moving, in your experience, you know it to be motionless. Over 2,500 years ago, the Buddha said, Believe nothing, no matter where you read it or who said it, unless it agrees with your own reason and common sense. To believe the pictures and testimonies of others over your own eyes and experience is a ridiculous relinquishment of discernment. It is a logical fallacy of appeal to authority and intellectually irresponsible. The very concept of belief is a weak epistemic function. Believing is what people do when they don't really know. Instead of admitting the truth, which is that they simply don't know, People often prefer to pick and choose various beliefs. But beliefs are antithetical to knowledge and become an impediment to its acquisition. If people accept that they don't know something, the mystery of the thing remains 
and a curious, skeptical, critical mindset can flourish. If people instead choose to believe something that they cannot really know, it is nothing but self-induced delusion. Put simply, all beliefs overstep the bounds of attainable knowledge. Beliefs should be banished from your psyche. We should only be involved in knowing and not knowing. What people believe or don't believe is unimportant and irrelevant. What matters is what we know, and when we don't or can't know something, it's important to admit that to ourselves, rather than finding some comforting belief to replace it. And that is why so many people choose to blanket themselves in beliefs, rather than admitting the simple truth that they don't know. Because beliefs are comforting. It's uncomfortable to realize that you don't know the greatest mysteries of life, and it's much more comforting to pretend you do by adopting a belief system that provides answers to all those questions. Then, instead of being a perplexed detective analyzing life's mysteries, you become an egotistic evangelist preaching blind faith. This is why I find religious flat-earthers to be a paradox and a problem. Many people who know that Earth is a level, motionless plane are also believers of various world religions. Since Flat Earth is mentioned in the holy scriptures of Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and others, members of these religions often take this as proof positive that everything else mentioned in their holy scriptures must also be literally true. This is simply not the case, however, and all claims must be validated by their own merit. The fact of the matter is that Flat Earth was the prevailing cosmology at the time when most of these holy scriptures were written, so it is no wonder that their worldview is reflective of that. Just because Flat Earth is mentioned in the Bible, and Flat Earth is true, doesn't mean that a man was born of a virgin and walked on water. It doesn't mean that snakes and burning bushes can talk, and it doesn't mean an ark could hold and feed tens of thousands of animals for months at a time. Believing these Bible testimonies of things we cannot prove or experience for ourselves is no different from believing the testimony of astronauts. In our experience, nobody has ever been born of a virgin or walked on water. Personally, we have never seen a snake or burning bush strike up a conversation. We may choose to believe or disbelieve in such things, but we cannot know them to be true. Therefore, when we are trying to awaken others to the reality of flat earth, religious beliefs really shouldn't enter into the discussion. A flat, motionless earth is objectively, observably, and empirically demonstrable and directly experienced by everyone. It doesn't require belief like the globe or religious scriptures. Flat earth is backed by abundant evidence experiments, and experience. And that is why people like myself don't just believe the Earth is flat. We know it is.